What's up, other truckers? You are now watching the Asian My Show live. What's going on, other truckers? Uh, welcome to the Asian My Show. Hopefully, you guys are doing great today. Today, we have on the show, Dave. How you doing today, Dave? What's, what's going on? Can you hear on, me all right, brother? Uh, hey, we're chilling, baby. Now, you know, we're you here. Got you now. You got me now? Great, man. Uh, we're here today to learn a little bit about hot shot car haulers and, and definitely a little bit about your journey into the semi truck car hauling world. And so, a lot of people are going to be interested in this. And hopefully, uh, uh, you guys get some value out of this. And Dave is actually a, a YouTuber himself. Before we get uh, going, give yourself some shine, brother. Tell people what your channel's about. Uh, well, over on my channel, it's all about. It, it started as just hot shot car hauling, hot shot trucking, uh, and then I really realized how far apart, you know, the hot shot freight and the car hauling was. So you know, we just focused on hot shot car hauling, and then it, it just went into car hauling altogether. You know, we just talk about strapping, making money, running the lanes, you know, because it's people think that you drive up, you park them and, and you just go to the next stop. And if it was only that easy, life would be great. You know, so it's just <laughs> really, it, it's really a, a peek into the world that you have no other way to see. When I started this, I had no trucking experience. I mean, dad was a truck driver. I had no trucking experience, no car hauling experience. I had nothing. There was no wow. YouTube out here telling me how to do it. So that's why I started mine. Hey, I love yeah, it. Now, I love it. Now they're everywhere. Hey, I hear you, right? Yeah. And so if you guys get an opportunity, uh, I will have uh, Hot Shot Dave's um, a channel in the description, in the pinned comments. You're going to see it everywhere, and you're going to see it in our presentation today as well. So let's get this started. And for people that are missing this live, they can watch this on the replay. And then at the end, we'll do a little Q&A so that you guys can get some more in-depth information in case we miss something from this training session. So with that, let's talk about this real quick. So hot shot car hauling. Versus semi truck car hauler. There's a lot of people in here that are thinking about going the hot shot trucking route versus going the semi truck route. And I can understand that. So, you know, for you people that are brand new, don't know nothing about nothing, you know, it looks a little different to me. Tell me about this, Dave. I mean, the, the left picture is hot shot trucking, right? And the right picture is semi truck hauling. Uh, what's the biggest difference between the two when you're looking at this picture, brother? Well, you, you were cracking up on there, but I think I know what you asked me. But um, contrary to what people believe, hot shot trucking, hot shot car hauling really has nothing to do with the power unit. I know when I say hot hmm. shot, you know, everybody thinks pickup truck. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Keep it going, brother. We're going to jump them back in in a second. I think we have a little technical difficulty just because he probably got a phone call. You know, we are on here live right now, and that's what happens sometimes. And, and we'll get him back in very shortly. And, uh, you know, so that you guys can watch this and uh, get some insight about this. But I'm going to try and get him back on right now, and then we will be good to go. Let's see. I got you, brother. All right, we're going to try something different. We're going to try something different. I got that old school truck, man, and it just blocks everything. So we're going to stand out here and try to do it this way. No, that's so, great. That's great. So all right. uh, can you hear me just fine? Yeah, you're good now. I can hear everything now. Got you. No, that's great. So uh, you were talking about the, the power only unit. So what's the biggest difference when you're looking at these two pictures? Well, this, see, the nine car, you, you, you can't possibly pick up and drop nine in a. Did I lose you? I oh, lost you for man. a second. 
Yeah, can I put this on Do Not Disturb while and still talk to you or no? Uh, no? Uh, probably, as long as your internet's working. Okay. Um, well, so the nine car is um, you, you're looking at your auction cars, your port cars, your dealer cars. You are catering to the big guys. You're, you're catering to one picks, one drops. Um, you know, so you're at the mercy of the big dealers. You you run their rates. You mm. you can't call the shots as much as you can with the truck on the left. Because the truck on the left is a lot, well, my left, I'm sorry, I don't know. Um, but that is a lot of people that have just bought a car, right? They spent mm -hmm. forty thousand dollars. Well, they want their car yesterday. Mm. So if somebody tells them four hundred, but it's gonna take a week, I say I can get it to you for six hundred and it'll be there tomorrow. They don't care about two hundred. You know, people people want instant gratification. Mm. You know, when we buy something, we want it now. We want to touch it. We want to feel it. We want to live it. And the hot shot trucking, like even with what I have now, I still mm -hmm. cater to what I call the hot shot, uh, the niche. Mm. I still go into neighborhoods. I, it's ugly at times, but I go into neighborhoods. I, uh, I still go do the barn finds. You know, I do stuff that a stinger can't do or won't do. You know, and that that's what makes me successful more than, um, you know, others, even with bigger rigs. You know, I can compare my numbers to some of those nine cars and my numbers mm -hmm. are more than those. Really? And so, OK, so uh, just to make sure that I'm understanding this, Dave, because this is me listening to this for the first time uh, right. on the right hand side, when you're looking at the semi truck car haulers. They're they're bringing these Mercedes or whatnot, like in this picture, to Mercedes dealership, right? So they're right. they're bringing it to the dealership, to uh, the manufacturer, or to the retailer. On the left right. side for hot shot trucking, car hauling, you guys are bringing it to the actual customer, so it's more niche focused. So you're saying more money, right? Yeah. Now now sometimes it may be the smaller dealers on the left, but my focus is the customer, the niche. You know, mm. it's. And people, if you, people buy from people they like. Like I was in sales before this. I sold cars for 15 years. So truck drive, like what we do, mm -hmm. the, the driving is just a byproduct of the selling yourself, the selling the service and being somebody that people like, you know, that's, right. if, if they think you're, you're ignorant or nasty or they don't trust you, they're not going to put their $50,000 truck in your possession so that makes sense it, it when you go to when you go to the hot shot world you know it's you you've got to be more professional you've got to you think more and every situation is different you know like the other day i hauled a a, guy, a car for a guy and his aunt was picking it up well his aunt's 89 years old you know well you can't deal with an 89 year old like i can deal with you mm. you know because they they're stuck in their ways. Some of them have lost trust. Some of them, they're just, you know, it, it's different. So you've got to, you know, kind of be, I call it a chameleon at times. You know, like when you go into people's houses doing moving. Right. Everybody's not the same. No, you know, no, you, no. You yeah. Can't, you can't go into a million dollar house and talk to somebody like you just walked in the hood of Detroit. You know, it just doesn't work that way. You you gotta, oh, you gotta I heard get that. in where you fit in. You know. Hey, I, I um, love that. So you know that. So that helps people get an understanding. And and if you guys can, uh, it sounds like uh, the Hasha car hauling world taught you how to get into a certain kind of niche. You know, and so. And like, talk, oh, hold on, one more thing on that previous video, that previous screen. Yeah. Those cars on the right, they're mm -hmm. like 35, 40 cents a mile. Those cars on the left, they're like mm -hmm. 70 to 90 cents a mile. Really? Yeah. So it doesn't matter if it's a Mercedes Benz and it's a $100,000 no. car. They don't give it don't nothing care. about that. They don't get Nope. I know people that will haul Lamborghinis cheaper than I'll haul a Honda Civic. Are you serious? Really? I'm dead serious. <laughs> it, price don't matter. You know, and, and to me, it's a, 
it, they're all just a piece of metal at this point. But right. you you got to look at risk to reward. Right. And people, when they haul their Lamborghinis, they're hauling those for clout. Look mm. at what I did. Look at this. Look at that. Yeah, well, you scratch that bumper and, let, and then show me what you did, you know? Wow. $3,000 bumper, big paint job. So you – and the way the dealers and the brokers look at it is if I give you nine cars right here, I'm saving you all kinds of time so you can save me a lot of money. Mm. Well, time is money. I'll give you more time. You give me more money, you know, but – wow. Not everybody looks at it that way. Well, that's crazy. I didn't know that. So I thought these guys this whole time, you know, hauling all these Lamborghinis to dealerships and all that were making more money. But it's really hauling for the customer, the direct customer themselves. Is that right? Right. Yeah. I mean, it's it's personally owned vehicles and a lot of people don't like them because they're more of a headache, mm. you know, because like I said, you're more dealing with service. an individual. Right. You're not dealing with just a dealer that says, I'll throw them over there. I'll get them next week, you know? Yeah, no, that um, makes sense. That, no, that, that makes sense. No, thank you for that. Um, So, you know, for people that are interested in uh, the hot shot trucking uh, car hauling world, uh, can you tell us a little bit about some of the startups? And I know nothing about these trucks. Sometimes I see a Dodge, sometimes I see a Ford, and they look like they're 350, 450s. You know, I, I know nothing about this. If, if someone's getting into this from straight zero, uh, what is your advice for that person? All right, well, that rig you're looking at right there, that's a hundred and ten thousand dollar setup. Mm. Hundred and ten grand. That's a thirty thousand dollar used trailer and an eighty thousand dollar truck. Wow. And that eighty thousand dollar truck is harder on the pocketbook than that fourteen thousand dollar truck over there. So, you know, if people the, the main reason a lot of people look at this and they're attracted to this is the ease of getting in anybody can go to to the local dealer and buy a ram 3500 mm. you put it on your personal credit wouldn't recommend it but they put right. it on their personal credit they buy it you know and then they try to figure it out from there but those trucks aren't made for that you know they're they're not made for all that weight like you're looking at a Ram 5500 that I blew up mm. to 2019 after 40,000 miles. There was a ride through the block. It's pulling 50,000 pounds all day long. So, you know, it's if you don't have a CDL and you're looking to get in this, what you're really looking at starting with it, because that's a that's a CDL rig there, too. So mm. you're looking at a, a regular pickup truck like a dually with a three car wedge. Now, yeah, you can get in that for 70 grand, but mm. your your um, your return is not near what it could be if you just went in the right way. Like I went in a hot shot car hauling and I wish I knew. They always say this. I wish I knew then what I know now. You know, Right, right, right. right. Um, I, I'm not going to knock it because some people need that. Like, right. Like me, I started with a twenty five hundred dollar truck. A 95 Ford F-350. Nightmare. But, <laughs> you know what I mean? It got me got me to where I'm at today. So, yeah. you can get in this for, you know, 15, 20, 30 grand. But that's not going to count your, your truck and your trailer. Because what people never think about is you're taking a truck that, A, is a brand new truck. Or it's a used truck that has been babied because most people baby their trucks. Right, right. And now you're going you're going to work the bejesus out of it. So we have I call it a six month break in. I don't care what truck you buy. In six months, you're going to spend about five grand in your first six months repairing stuff. Woo! So, you know, whether it's the brakes, it's the alternator because they're always running it's the batteries it, it's something you know because they're not used to running up and down the road like that that makes like, sense you know we put a hundred thousand miles a year these trucks these pickups what do they run 15 20 thousand miles a year they're not used to it so, that makes so much sense to me because uh, I, I think about that a lot of these people you might be buying from are personal vehicles they're not driving it like that at all right no, not at all. Like they, they wouldn't even think about doing what we're getting ready to do with them. 
Wow. Like if you told them I'm getting ready to abuse your truck for 50,000 pounds, they're probably not going to sell it to you. You know, and another thing people get so confused with is everybody's idea is I'm going to pay cash for everything and I'm going to have a debt free business. Right. Mm. But let's say you're starting with 30 grand. You're going to go buy a truck. You're going to buy a trailer. And then what if something happens? So I would say you finance what you can. You know what I mean? Save your money for what you can't. If you buy that truck and the motor blows up, well, guess what? You can't usually finance that motor. You know what I mean? You got to have that cash. So starting up, I wouldn't recommend the whole uh, non like cash business, you know, at first, because, right. you know, we're, we're living, we're coming in on our life savings here. We're not a bank or a big corporation. It's got millions of dollars to do what we want with. So. No, I understand that. Noah. Uh, thank you so much. And, you know, when looking at this, you know, um, how much, you know, should a, a, a person spend on their first setup if they want to go into the hot shot, uh, uh, car hauling world, you know, what would you recommend? What's the amount of money you think would be right or the amount of mileage? Cause I don't know how that works with a, uh, a truck like that. I know with other trucks, you know, you always want to buy something with maybe, you know, 500,000 miles or less. Right. But with this type of setup, what is the amount of money that you would want to spend on, you know, on both to get yourself started? Well, the, the easiest thing to buy is the trailer because, as you know, a trailer is metal mm -hmm. and two axles for the most part. So that's cheap to repair. So I would go out. I'd buy five, six thousand dollar. Much as I don't want to say wedge, I'm a wedge guy to the end because you can make <laughs> so much money with them. But you've got to know how to drive them. Yeah. And people don't understand that because a lot of them have three axles. Mm. And, and there, I got a buddy who's a truck driver for seven years and he got a triple axle trailer and he was complaining about his, his front axle. I said, well, you don't have to drive the truck. What do you mean? I've been doing this six years. I said, well, when you go to turn, you probably drag that front axle, right? He's like, well, yeah, like you can't do that with three axles, you know? Yeah, I'll so destroy it. <laughs> you're right. You just go drag it and keep it rolling. That's what I do with this one now. But, um, you, so the trailer, you just spend five, six grand, you get a nice wedge. And the reason you want a wedge is because when it comes to cars, you have your expenses, your fuel, and your profit, right? Mm. Expenses, maintenance, fuel, and profit. So if you take away one of those three, which one are you losing? Mm. You're going to lose your profit. You still yep. got your expensive and your maintenance. So if you go out and you buy a two-car trailer, you're running for expenses, maintenance, and fuel. I mean, you may get a little bit, but it ain't going to be worth enough for you to be out there and do what you're doing. Um, so I, I would say if you're doing, uh, you know, non-CDL, hot shot, the, the wedge is the way to go. Get it with a fifth wheel. Don't do the, the gooseneck. But as far as trucks, man, that's a tough one because mm. you can get one that's got 80,000 miles that's been baby, that's been sat around, and you know you're getting ready to tear something up on that one, you know? That's or so crazy to you, me, Dave, that to think that, you know, uh, yeah, the more it's been babied, it's not, it's not used to running hard. So that's crazy. Right. Or you can go out and buy one that's got 200,000 miles that's been running up and down the highway, and you're going to do the same thing with it. Mm. You know, so it's, I say it all the time. You you cannot use common sense in this business. You just can't. <laughs> you know, it, even like dealing with DOT, you can't use common sense when uh, it comes hey, to that gotta, stuff. Hey, they gotta find something, brother. You know, that's that's the day right. truth there, about. <laughs> yeah, like there's no common sense. Everybody's like, oh, it's just common sense. You show me where common sense works out here. It doesn't because everything uh, I've just told you is against common sense. Yeah, you know. You know, so, that, that, and, and that's like, the craziness, yeah. Right, and people are going to say, oh, we'll buy a brand new truck because it's got a warranty. Well, my brand new truck sat three months waiting on parts from a warranty. Mm. So that warranty did me no good because I lost thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. You know, that's why I had to go out and buy this truck. And once I got in this, there was just no going back, you know, so. Man, that's 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 crazy, you know. 
and you know and and just before we keep on going real quick i just want to say what's up to you know my moderators um you know i see uh, uh dirty broke is in here let me see who else i got in here i got a lot of good people in here i got cash and king in here uh moderating and what's up cash and king yep look at that we got toe picklet in here look at that so you know we got we got other people in here hanging out with us huh and so yeah we're learning a lot today so here's the big one that everyone wants to know and i want to know this too all right cdl versus non-cdl <laughs> okay this right. is what i really want to know so is non-cdl a scam you know, because a lot of people are interested in getting uh, into hotshot trucking because they think that they don't need a CDL. Uh, they've been driving a, a car long enough and they can make that big buck. So tell me what's up with this myth. Is that a myth or is, is non-CDL you can make some money? Uh, can you elaborate a little bit, Dave? I built my company off of non-CDL. You know, oh. I ran non-CDL for two and a half years. Really? Uh, tell me about you it. You can do it. All right, really? so non-CDL is all about your setup and planning because you've got Kaufman and Take Three trailers. Those are the – that I'm aware of. They're the only two trailers that you can do what they call D-rate. Mm. So, well, first of all, let me get to what is what requires a CDL for people to understand what I'm getting ready to say. Yeah, So, all. if you are over – 26,000 pounds GVWR gross vehicle weight rating or GVW actual gross vehicle weight so if you're over those two mm. you need a CDL so the what you have to do is you have to find a truck with a trailer and your GVWR has to be under 26,000 pounds so what's so that now, the only look way like? to do that, it looks like that right there in the picture. Now, like that's that could be a not CDL, but that one's a CDL setup. Okay. For the simple fact of that's a 5,500 truck. But mm. if I didn't tell you, you wouldn't know that. So if you put a 5, I lost you for a second. All right, I'm here. Okay. If you put a 3,500, a 3,500 in front of that, you're mm -hmm. not CDL all day long. So when you want to go non CDL, you need a truck. You buy your truck first mm -hmm. because the truck is the one that you cannot derate. You cannot change your GBWR on your truck. And now people are going to say, well, I, I can go to DMV and it registered for this. Registration does not matter. I'm going to move you for a minute and show you kind of what I'm talking about. Yeah, well, let so me take you the off the screen real quick. Let me let me get you on the screen fully trailers, so that we have. You see that right there? That's a plate. This is what they where is it? What they call a VIN plate right there. See, so this one is 24,000 pounds on this one. So what you need is. Kaufman and take three, you can redo your VIN plate. You can you can get that to match your truck. So if your truck is 14,000 pound GVWR, you want to buy a 12,000 pound GVWR trailer. But you can call those two companies after you buy the trailer and change it to that 12,000 pound GVWR. Um, so you're not you're you're not stuck. You no, know that's now legit. if you go out. Like, if you go out and buy any other trailers, like this trailer here, they're not going to derate this trailer. They're not going to do it. And uh, I, I could bet you, I'm not even looking at the comments, but I can bet you somebody's going to say it's <laughs> all based on your axles. If you've got three 7,000-pound axles, you're at 21,000 pounds. That's not how the law is written. As I said earlier, common sense is out the window. <laughs> it's out the window. If you go in the FMCSA regulations, you will only find GVWR for a CDL regulation. You will not find anything that says you cannot exceed the, the GVWR. 
Okay. But so if you have 21,000 pound axles, but you're only got a 12,000 pound trailer, that just means your trailer is rated for more than what you can do. That doesn't mm. mean you can legally do it because legally you have to go by that plate. You don't go by those axles. You go by the plate. Mm. No, that's, so, that's, that's good information, bro. So the big question to me is, does non the CDL make more than non CDL? Because why the hell will I get my CDL and hot shot trucking if non CDL is gonna pay me more? What's what's the truth well, behind that? Well, non CDL is not gonna pay you more. Okay. It, and the reason it's not gonna pay you more is it you're limiting yourself now because those dualies they weigh eight thousand pounds, and if you have a truck that weighs six thousand pounds. You know, so that doesn't leave you much room for your because you still have to stay under twenty six thousand pounds, your whole combination and your cars mm. now. But here's a problem that not CDL is going to run into. I don't know if you've noticed or follow it but Ford after this year. The only car they're going to make is the Mustang. They're not going to make any more Tauruses or Fusions or none of that. So all these manufacturers are going to the bigger cars, the, the big SUVs and the trucks. Mm. Well, if, if they're going to weights above 4,000 pounds, sorry about that. You're good. Um, over 4,000 pounds, but now you're in trouble. Because mm. now you're losing a car. So you've got to, you're restricting yourself so much that you can't just look at the load board and haul anything. Um. Yeah. You know, so you know, at so, the end of the day, would you recommend people if they have the opportunity to to get their CDL first uh, before doing hot shot trucking? Absolutely, uh, because hot shot trucking, it, it's the problem with hot shot trucking. If you don't know hot shot trucking, mm -hmm. is where do you go? Like they can't call you for advice on hot shot trucking. They can't just talk to anybody, and I'm not saying nothing bad about you, but you can't just talk to a truck driver about right. hot shot trucking because right. they don't understand. And most people in this world will not tell you, yes, I'm failing. Come on out here and do what I'm doing. Or I'm mm. failing. Don't do what I'm doing. They're always going to say, oh, I'm making great money. Well, what's great money? Oh, I make 700 a week. Well, that's not great money to me. You know, so... It, great money is based on perception. Mm. So, sorry, man. These brokers are killing me. <laughs> no, you're good. Hey, you're good. You're good. They're but, you know, that's me. that's true, though. You know, money, when it comes down to money, it is about, you know, perception. And, you know, as we're talking about great money, before we actually jump into that, you know, I just want to give some shine uh, to Hasha Dave here. You know, subscribe to his show. You know, uh, I know he's doing semi trucks now. The Hotshot Dave has a, a beautiful uh, trucking channel. Uh, just showing you the skills, man, what you need and uh, giving you some value today. So if you get an opportunity to definitely check him out. And so let's 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 kind of look into this because we were just talking about, you know, perception of, you know, what is good money. Right, Dave? And right. so I know that on your channel, you do updates of the revenue that you've made in the past. And I know for people that are watching now, they might not know that you are doing it with the semi truck now and not with a, uh, I don't want to call it a smaller truck, but with hot shot. Right. And right. so, you know, you did something here where, uh, you had your one month, uh, revenue. And I want to talk about this because a lot of people are interested, uh, knowing and for everyone watching right now, we're here with Dave. Uh, we're talking about the difference between hot shot trucking and semi truck car hauling and just getting enough information to get you where you need to go. So you had some settlements that I, I hopefully you didn't mind that, you know, I, I took out and uh, uh, put on here, but you know, they were on your YouTube channel. So I thought they'd be okay. <laughs> I put them out there. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So looking at this, for people that are watching this right now, um, this are these are some settlements for the hot 
shot trucking, okay? This is not with a semi-truck car hauling. Uh, tell me about this. Uh, talk to me right. about some well, of these numbers. Well, hold on. All right, so what you have here is you actually have a – you have the same trailer I'm running now, a five-car trailer, mm -hmm. with a pickup truck. Okay. And so what So what we're getting ready to show people is how a truck can make you money without mm. increasing capacity. Mm. You don't I need like capacity that. to make money. And that's what we're getting ready to show people. Uh, because this here – this is me running my five car trailer with my pickup truck. And now I am leased onto a carrier uh, because insurance was thousand thousand dollars a month cheaper this way. So uh, the first number on the left is that's my pure gross number. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you can see the broker fee. That's the actual factoring. Like a couple of them get factored if they're 30 days out. And then um, I guess it's hidden in these ones. But then it, over on the other side is the actual growth. So if you take 25% of whatever that number is and deduct it, mm -hmm. I get 75% of that number is what I end up with. So with a pickup truck, um, that that's the numbers I was making. I see and that. So let's talk about this right here. So we see about 5,200 on, uh, what was that? March 13th. And then the week after we see 3,221 on average, uh, you being a, uh, uh, now this is set up with, uh, as far as a CDL holder, right? With the pickup truck and, and your trailer that you have now, correct? Correct. And yeah. so what was your average that you were making as a hot shot, uh, trucker doing car hauling? Uh, average uh, a month gross net wh whatever you want to uh, let people know well i know people don't like it but i'm going to give a disclaimer right here is i talk gross and the reason i talk gross is because your bills will be different than my bills you I know do. you can go out and pay cash for a truck or you can get a truck payment you know whichever so if I give you my gross number and you know what your expenses are going to be, that's going to be easier for you to figure out than me tell you my net numbers, but you don't know what I just spent on what, you know? Mm. So personally, I don't think the net is important or anybody's business as much as the gross. Right, right. Because no, and I agree. You, you build it. You work off the gross. You can't work off the net, you know? I agree save with that. money off the gross. So let so, me reword that now. How much would someone that was doing what you're doing make gross a week or a month? Well, you're looking like this gross here. This is 56 or what's that? 52. I'm getting old, man. 52 and 32. Mm. And now if you look at the one on the right, I only worked two days that week. Mm. That was the 11th. I delivered on the 11th and then I delivered on the 13th. So it was three days I worked that week. Um, I was preloaded. So I dropped, I picked up a load, dropped it, went home. Mm. So four days, what's that, 3,200? So, you know, after that, it, it was, uh, I don't even remember what the, the net was, but you can gross easily and you can do this with a three car too. You can be twenty-one to twenty-two thousand a month gross. Easy. Mm. There's no reason you shouldn't. None at all. Wow! Wow! No, that's great. No, thank you for that. And so, you know, I want to. You know, hopefully we don't get too personal here. But I did see in one of your videos that you said you were done. You wanted to quit. You wanted to move to Florida, and for me and you to be roommates. I think. I think that's what was in the video, but I wasn't quite sure. That that sounded great, except I hate Florida. You know what I mean? I would go to Alaska before I came to Florida. Oh, I come on, Florida. brother. So you I'm know. not a heat guy. I'm not a heat guy. No, I hear um, you. I hear you. So uh, can you talk personally? You know, you're – so you can make money in hot shot trucking. Uh, you're you're talking about making twenty to twenty two thousand dollars gross and doing that pretty fairly easily. You know what will make you quit hot shot trucking? What was your reason for that, brother? I started this in two thousand seventeen. That white truck that I just blew up mm -hmm. four months ago was my fifth truck since two thousand seventeen. Fifth truck. Five five trucks. Wow. Now, to 
be to be fair and have transparency, two of them were a rental truck, like the okay. Enterprise lease thing. I tried that. You blew it up there. Work, you blew up the Enterprise trucks. <laughs> no, they were a thousand dollars a week, bro. They blew oh, up my you. pocket. Is what happened. Oh, I um, <laughs> but dude, it just it gets so aggravating dealing with those pickup trucks. It's just so aggravating. Um, you know, cause you, it'd so be where do you one sleep? Day, one where day. do you sleep? I, I, I don't know how that works back there. Is there enough room for you to sleep back there? Oh yeah. So what we do is you, you take the cab, you take the, the bed or take the seats, take everything out of it. You build a bed back there. Mm. So, cause contrary to what people believe, DOT can't tell you where you sleep. I can sleep right here in the rock if I want, as long as I'm off duty. I right, can't right, be right. on sleeper berth. I have to be off duty. So that's how we legally get away with sleeping in the pickup trucks. Oh, I see. But I'm going to tell you what, at six foot one, it's a little rough. Oh, now, wow. You're a tall guy. I, dude, you think I'm tall. I don't know how Toe Piglet does it. He's like six four, six five. Dude, he's like way up here and he sleeps in the back of a pickup truck. Dude, More is Toe Piglet that, is he that tall? Dang. Dude, he's huge. He, he's like, yeah. <laughs> like, usually I'm not sure, but when I met him, I was like, hey, buddy. You know, like, he's tall. Wow. I, I don't know how he does. It. He must have his head out the back window or something. I don't oh, know. Oh, man. No, I hear you. But, I hear uh, you. I Because yeah, me being six feet tall myself, I didn't think I could do it with a pickup truck. Because when I got to go somewhere in a dang car in a normal truck and I got to sit in the sleep in the back, my neck hurts. Everything hurts, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but. We set it up with memory foam mattresses and like the mat the bed in my truck was more comfortable than the bed in my house. There but, we go. You know, that's just you know, like my semi's the same way. That thing's so comfortable that you, you've got to set it up that way. But you know, it, it's just harder to live out of them. You really don't have any room storage wise, and you know, it's it, it's not a a great quality of life, in my opinion. Mm. So just, what would you recommend for people, Dave, uh, uh, if they're thinking about hot shot trucking, what would you recommend for them as far as, um, you know, what, what type of characteristic of a person would do really well as a hot shot, you know, a car hauler or in trucking in general? Well, it would be pretty much the same answers, you know, as being a regular car, a regular trucker, because, Hot shot trucking is really no different than trucking. We go by the same laws, uh, the same logbook, same rules, same regulations. Um, you know, we still have to get up and do everything on our own. We don't have anybody babying us. Like, mm. you've got to be a go-getter. You've got to be able to think outside the box. You know, you, you can't just be, oh, if something happens, I'm going to call roadside. I'm going to call a mechanic because... In a big truck, I can call a mechanic to come out here and work on this truck. Right. You know, on a pickup truck, I'm calling a tow truck. And that's seven, eight, nine hundred dollars to tow that rig in. Whoa, I didn't think about that. I didn't think about that right there. So they don't have like on call for like normal cars or trucks or whatnot? No, not really. No. Wow, no, I didn't I didn't like think about when that. Your car, when your car breaks down, what do you do? Get it towed yeah. to the shop. Yeah, you're right. You know, you're right. Because these trucks, like the, the trucking industry as a whole, is centered around a semi. So a roadside mechanic is not going to go out and buy the computers for these new Fords. They're not going to buy the computers for these new Dodges. You know, no, there's not enough work and return on investment. You know, no, that makes you sense. can be along the road and my mechanic. People think I'm nuts, but my maintenance and repairs on this truck are cheaper than on the Dodge Ram. Really? Like, I, I, I couldn't yeah. I couldn't even think of that, brother. And so, I mean, so, okay, so tell me this then. You know, if you're telling me that hot shot trucking is just like trucking uh, in a semi truck, is the reason the real reason why you quit hot shot trucking was you were just deciding to go the semi truck route and try that? Well, Hot shot trucking was always a stepping stone. You know, mm. I got into hot shot trucking because I have no CDL. As mm. I said, I had no trucking experience, none at all. Right. So when you have no trucking experience 
and I'm hard headed and I don't want to work for anybody. Right. So <laughs> I wasn't willing to go out here and have somebody tell me, oh, you can't go home. No, you, you can go fly kite. I'm going home, you know? Mm. So I, I started that to, you know, I knew the ultimate goal was always get a big truck. I didn't know anything other than it was going to be a big truck. You know, I didn't know what I was going to be hauling, what I was going to be doing. Hot shot car hauling was, like I said, a stepping stone for me. No, so, I love that. And that's what it did. You know, it got me to where I needed to be. Uh, I can tell you now, if I didn't have a mentor and didn't have people helping me, mm. it, it, the learning curve would have been so steep that I would have lost everything. I would have lost it all. You know what I mean? No, that, so, that that's awesome. You know, I try to. Yeah, I try to preach that to people, but people just they it's hard for people to put pride away. You oh, know, guarantee, it, brother. I want to be a boss. <laughs> I'm the boss. Dude, I had I had two owner operators running under me last year. Mm -hmm. Dude, everybody's like, oh, owner operators are the way to go. They got skin in the game, they got this, they got that. They also got an ego that says this is my equipment. I'm the boss and I do what I want. Mm. You know, and it doesn't work that way. So you know, it's it's just something you have to be able to put aside, you know, to make this work. And most people aren't willing to do that. You know, and you may have to downsize. You may have to go home and tell your wife, hey, you know that $60,000 Suburban you got? We got to sell that and buy a $15,000 Suburban. And that ain't going to go over so well. So you better have a darn good reason <laughs> on why you're doing it. You know hey. what I mean? But I love it. I know, love it. it it's... It's going to cost you, and you just don't know what it's going to cost you till you get there. So you've got to make sure everybody's on the same on the same page. And if this is just if this is your dream, and your spouse or partner don't understand, mm. you're in for a rude awakening because they have to be willing to sacrifice just as much as you are. Like I got a wife and five kids. You let a normal person go home and say, "Hey, babe." I'm going to be gone for three weeks and I'll be back. No, nah, it don't fly like that. You know, mm. so you, you, everybody's got to be on the same page. No, I agree know? to that. I agree to that. And so, you know, so for people that are watching, you know, we're here today with Hotshot Dave and we're, we're learning about the Hotshot trucking business, but also about car hauling with the Hotshot truck and with the semi truck. And so that leaves me to this slide right here. Uh, you picked up this beautiful semi truck and you know, the biggest thing that a lot of people want to know really is when it comes down to it, the revenue difference, right? Between hot shot trucking, car hauling and uh, doing it with the semi truck. Is it more money? And I got this off of one of your videos and the bottom of this says $6,020 there. And you know, can you elaborate a little bit about the biggest difference as far as maybe money goes gross wise or, you know, comfort, what have you? That's my worst week since I bought this truck. My that's worst your week. worst week. Okay. So, Talk to me about it. Talk to me about it. That's my worst week. Like I, I got, I got nine and $10,000 weeks. Um, so what a, and this is where I, I said earlier, we're getting ready to show people how a power unit can make you more money without adding more capacity. Right. Because as I said earlier, that non-CDL, and it's the same with CDL with a hotshot truck, with a pickup, you're still restricted. You can't put 30,000 pounds on your drive axles like I can now. You know, you can't just get on the load board and get anything um, that's on there and haul it. You know, and I wish I would have thought to send you a couple of my loads, but if people are interested, they're on the channel. But I haul stuff now that people are like, how did you get it on that trailer? Mm. Um, you know, because I have the truck. I, I, I'm usually never over 60,000 pounds, so weight's not an issue. It's just getting it on there. It's a puzzle. Um you know, so we got to get you back on the show. Uh, we got to get you back on the show when uh, when you have to do one of those puzzles. We would love to see that live. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
everybody's waiting on them. It's uh like I show some of the videos, but man, I tell you what, it, it takes me three or four hours at times, you know, and that's just stuff that people don't see. Uh, and I'm not talking about anybody else in the industry, like down in them. But, you know, when when we do this, you know, we're just not, you know, backing up and somebody loading us like you got to get out here. You climb around the trailer, jump up and down. And, right. you know, I'll be dripping in sweat by the time I'm done, you know, because you got to do what you got to do to get it on. And it's hard work. It's hard work, um, you know, and. Not everybody's willing to do that. I know people, matter of fact, that's how I got this trailer. A guy was a uh, dry van, a reefer. He all one of them. He decided to go to car haul. And after about two weeks, he said, nah, this ain't for me, man. I'm going back to my dry van, you know? Which, yeah, t- it, it's not for everybody. I know. I hear but, you. It's like the moving business. So, you know, I so thinking out loud then for people that are watching this now, you know, if you want to get into the car hauling business, it does sound like doing it with a semi truck is going to be more lucrative if you do it right. Is that correct? Right. It, absolutely. But here's there's one thing we have not talked about. And without this, nothing else matters. Talk to me about it. Talk to me about it. Dispatching yourself is an art. Mm. Because you as a truck driver and every other truck driver. When I tell you guys you got a deadhead somewhere, what do you say? I ain't deadheading. Nope. I ain't doing that. Not doing it. I'm not doing that. Now, listen. Now, listen. I live in Delaware. I got Philadelphia right right around the corner. Let's say I want to go to Mission or Chicago. I can go to Pittsburgh, go right past Philly, drive all the way across the state, pick up in Pittsburgh, and go to Michigan, and I will make more money in Pittsburgh than I would have back in Philly. Mm. I would make more money. So the perception of, is it really deadhead? If you're paying me at the end of, at the end of all this, if I'm right. making more money to drive empty, is it really deadhead? Right. You, you no, that saying? makes sense. And so, that makes a lot of sense to me, you know? A lot of people just want to give me what's close and I'll run it. And well, if everybody does that, everybody's going to get the same thing, you know, but like uh, with snowbirds right now, you know, you right. probably do it with moving and we do it with cars. Everybody's going from the North to the South. So who's not getting moved right now? North Carolina, South Carolina, uh, Virginia, mm. Delaware. Nobody's looking in them States. You guys are looking up north where all the money's at because that's where everybody wants to go from. Right. But if you looked in them lower states, you could probably make the same money Mm. because they want to move just as bad. And they're going to say, well, you got to pay these guys to come down here empty, you know, and and they'll do it. They will do it to get get what they want. You know, you know, there's um, people pay for. And you know what? That makes a lot of sense. And, you know, um, my man here, and he has a beautiful YouTube channel too. And we're going to get into Q and a right now. Uh, this is, this is man, a good friend of man. yours. Ratman is a good guy, yeah. man. Really Rat good man. dude. You know, he yeah. says repositioning, not deadhead, you know, so let's get That's into exactly a little bit. Of, what it is, yep. Let's get into a little bit of Q and a and answer a couple questions, uh, before we let you go. And, uh, you know, I just want to thank you so much for being on the show, brother. And let me jump on I right here. Actually, of course. Let me let me give you some shine, brother, because you're here now. So let me jump on YouTube real quick and let me look up. Give me a second. So right here. So my man here has a lot of knowledge, you know, hot shot Dave and um as you go in, you can see various videos that he's doing and telling you things from him making money, from failing, from doing all these things. And no, hey, like uh, this would go, go back up a minute. This, uh, that one right there. Why are you failing? Like mm-hmm. that, that really, if nobody watches anything else, just watch that one. That's mm-hmm. really not about trucking. That is more about that. That's, it's a motivational thing that I did 
on why certain people succeed over others. Mm. You know, and what it comes down to is when we're watching TV, anything we're doing in life, we look up to certain people. Mm. You know, well, all those people have something in common that others aren't doing that we're not looking up to. They're actors. Mm. So it's not that they're an actor. It's that they're taking action. Mm. You know, so that's what that video goes into, you know, kind of breaking it up on just like my whole philosophy on how to be successful and what will stop you dead in your tracks. No, I like that, brother. I like that. You know, so if you guys can for me, you know, subscribe to Hot Shot Dave. He's here right now. He's giving you all his jewels that he can uh, in this time uh, for this interview. So, you know, I I really appreciate you for that, brother. And so let's look at some of these and let's do a little bit of Q&A. Let you answer some of these questions because I know I can't. (laughs) I don't have the keys, you know. Uh, um, Let's see here. Here's a question for you. Uh, Is the only car load board central dispatch? Uh, Well... It's not the only one, but unfortunately, it's the predominantly one, the pro- predominant one. Mm. Um, you have these major brokers who are trying to branch off. You have other, um, like other apps and all that that are branching off, but nobody has been able or had the backing to really just make the load board like Central Dispatch has. But the way they've been able to do that is because they're not just a load board. Mm. They they're tied in with like uh, they're I think that's ready ready dispatch I believe or ready logistics. But uh, that that's Cox Automotive. Do they own so much stuff? They own auctions. They own dealerships. They own wholesale. So it, it's not that they weren't able to just go out and put all that money because that's a lot of money to put out. You know, and then you have to convince me and every other trucker to spend the money, you know, and it's going to work. And now that load board is one hundred twenty dollars a month mm. and it's not even a live load board like the load board does. Great. That's that's how I get most of my money because I run OTR because I, I have an ADD problem and I don't want to be in the same place too long. So, <laughs> and that, that's why I don't drive uh, drive man or nothing else. I can't sit still. Uh, but so right now they are the main one. You have others, but it, that that's the main one. But you gotcha. have people right now that are <clears throat> that are actually anti central dispatch and really? will not put loads on central dispatch. Yeah, it's just so I think the industry is changing. It, it's it just, just not changing. Right. It's not changing fast enough for anybody to see. So, no, it's not the only one. But it's the one you need. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. And uh, uh, here's a question for you. They're saying cars are really slow right now. So is like all seasons, uh, is this a seasonal thing? Is there what, – what's the what's the busy season and what's the slow season if there's any? Can you elaborate on that maybe? So, so when people say cars are slow, you, you can't – you, you got to know what they're talking about. Like, he could be talking about auction cars, he could be talking about dealers, he could be talking about sales, or he could be talking about privately owned vehicles. Because I'm going to tell you right now, there's no slowness on snowbirds going south. Mm. You know, there there's nothing slow about people that have extra money right now. Believe it or not, people are spending money. I'm getting ready to pick up three 1950 panel trucks out of Oklahoma, take them to Ohio. So so this guy's got something to work on over the winter. Mm. So it's not, and I would bet money, not talking bad about the person, but I would bet money he's running the lower I-10, I-20 corridor. Because what happens is everybody runs from the cold, everybody runs from the heat. And and I, you know, I kind of took this from Dave Ramsey, but if you do what they do, you get what they get. Mm. You know, so... If everybody's in this central location, you know, then it's going to be slow. You know, I, it's been a little tougher, but I I haven't made any less money in the last couple of weeks than I have. And believe it or not, I'm 90% load board. 
No, I hear you. I so, hear you. I, I do most of the low board. So, yeah, it could be slow, but it just all depends on where you're at. No, that's you're good, brother. And so, you know, so overall, you know, you know, it just seems like there's a lot of money out here. And I'm glad that you were able to jump on and just give us a little bit more information about just hotshot trucking in general and about car hauling, you know. So at the end of this, is there anything that you'd like to leave people with? Uh, before we let you go. So this is a process. You know what I mean? Like when you're looking to build any business, I don't care if it's trucking, car hauling, starting a restaurant, whatever you do, this is a process. And what I've noticed a lot of people do is they take time, they research, they slowly get their money together, this, that. And once they see a little light, like I, I say you're, you know, you're trying to open your door, but once you get there, but you don't know what's on the other side. Once they crack the door and start to push, they just kick it in. Just boom, full force. Don't, don't look at nothing else. And you can't do that. You have to be just as methodical in the beginning of your business and the middle and the end as you were starting it up. Like this isn't a race. If you, if you're like me, you're living, you're expecting to live another 40, 50 years. So what is the hurry to get this started? You say, oh, I want to make money faster. But if making money faster means you get out of it faster because you make major mistakes, is it really worth moving faster? So take your time, do your research. And even like what I say, don't take what I say as the gospel, research it. You, no one should be taking anybody's advice and not what they call nowadays fact checking it, you know? So check what I said. Check and see, like, because if I tell you, oh, this, this lane is hot, but you go and look it up and you're like, well, I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to climb the Rockies. I don't want to go deal with the heat. So that's where you would do your research to make sure it's going to work for you. Because just because I'm doing it doesn't mean you're going to come out here and do the same thing. Because you don't know all the steps that I went through to get where I'm at. And you're skipping that part. You know, so it's just, just slow, methodical. Keep the same pace. Don't change anything. You know, and, and you can make it. You know, I uh, stay... now yeah i got back you at it All right. yes, sir. uh one of these days i'm going to uh i'll tell the whole story but i haven't done it yet no nah, i hear you i uh yeah anybody can do it. i'm gonna tell you now if i can do it anybody you ain't calls man it's work 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 stop it puppy my dog's talking to me is it working yet are you back I can't hear you. I got nothing. Jump out and jump back in at the end. Let me jump out. And then. We're having a little technical difficulties at the very end. Uh, he's working right now. So uh, uh, Hotshot Dave is taking time out of his time to let us know what's going on. So at these times too, uh, any of the moderators that are on here. Uh, please, uh, you could definitely uh, join the show. Uh, Want to give uh, some of the moderators some shine. So, you know. If the moderators are here, uh, jump on and join the show for a second. Can you hear me? You got me now? Yeah, you got hey, me. I, I got you, brother. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. My bad. No, you're good. Whew. 
We didn't think about this when we said do it in the middle of the day. <laughs> hey, you know, and, and it's all good, brother. You know, at, right. at the end of the day, it's like, uh, um, it's, oh, Ratman said post a pic. He, he, he made a picture of you. Uh, I got oh, I got to oh. find it. Oh, yo, you got it there? <laughs> but, uh, let me find it. Let me find yeah, it. I told him <laughs> I was going to use it, but I didn't use it yet. You know, Go ahead, post let, it up. Dude, let me, let I me look at this him, real quick. Him, I said, that's a retirement life. You know what I mean? That's a retirement <laughs> life right there. Boy. That's the retirement life. So for all you guys that are, are thinking about getting into trucking and learning trucking at the end of it, you know, this is really the goals right here. Right. And so, uh, let me, let me upload this picture real quick. And then when I do that, I, I can show people it. Give me a second. It's just funny stuff, bro. But yeah, no, you know, let, let people know. Uh, is there, uh, you got kind of cut off uh, just a di uh, bit. So is there any last things that you'd let people know? Let them know, man. Let them know. Let them know. Uh, I mean, I just. Just finish your dream the same way you started it. You know what I mean? Like, um, you just you just gotta keep pushing. You know, you can go to hotshotdave.com. I got information in there. I got a contact. You know, my email's over there. So if you have any questions, you know, I'm sometimes a little slow at responding right away, but it, it's all up there. Hey, that's what's up, brother. And uh, I'm jumping on this picture right now. And so I can show people this is going to be your uh, uh, right, your man. your retired your retired <laughs> job when you're done with it all. So let me see this. This this is just oh, too this funny. Oh, my bro. retirement job. I I meant that's the time. That's where uh, Ratman's <laughs> retirement life. He's got nothing better to do than sit around and you know Photoshop. But uh huh uh huh uh huh. But let let me look at this real quick and then uh. We could we could jump on and show this. This is hilarious right here. Uh, Ratman's got one coming. He just don't know it yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he got man. nothing better to do, boy. Uh, I love it. I love yeah. it. So I should really be using this as a thumbnail. And all I have to say is you must have been working out, man, because you're looking great in this picture right here. Yeah, well, and you see what <laughs> trucking did, right? Because it ain't here no more, boy. And, you know, matter of fact, I'm up here in Dallas, Fort Worth now. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. You know, that's that's a beautiful thing, man. So overall, you know, uh, thanks so much for being on the show, brother. And we'll catch you on the next one. I appreciate you. Not a problem, man. You be blessed. Good stuff, guys. Good stuff, guys. You know, it's 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 one of those things where, um, uh, th this is the reason why we do these shows. Uh, we have a little bit of fun. Uh, we show some information, but overall, it, it's mostly about just uh, getting you guys where you need to go, whatever that is. You know, it, it really doesn't matter at the end of the day if a thousand people watch this show or if five people watch this show, as long as the people that are looking for this information get what they need. And that's what we do. We're going to have different guests all the time. If you'd like to be on the show, uh, jump at the AsiaMyShow.com and you can be on the show and uh, talk about your life, talk about trucking. And I I want everyone to know that this show is 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 for everybody. Uh, everyone is always welcome to be on this show. So I really appreciate you guys for everything. Uh, thank you so much. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this live video. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Much love, peace, all that good stuff. And we're going to be out of baby. Let's go. What's up, other truckers? You are now watching the Asian My Show live.